Hey guys, what is going on? Matt Kelly here, and welcome to another episode of this epic, epic boat project. Uh, today we are getting all of the fiberglass on the uh, supports, on the stringer, on the transom. What I'm doing is I'm resin coating them first before they go in the boat, so they don't soak all the resin out of the glass when they get glassed in properly. So I'm basically soaking them in resin right now, which is an interesting way of doing it, but I understand it's the right way. Um, but before I do that, I wanted to show you guys a clip I shot the other night, which is all about how I actually shaped all of these little things right here. So basically, these are all currently drying at the moment. Um, these are all of the supports that will run off the stringers down to the floor of the boat and also so on, on the actual hull and then also support the floor. So you can see they're all very different, very specific shapes. Uh, cutting these to a specific shape was actually a bit of a, a, a mission, a bit of a challenge. But you can see here, I've almost got like a key so I know which piece gets glassed where on the stringer. So I'll be able to literally glass these onto here before it gets put in the boat and then drop it all into the boat as one unit. That's the plan, but I just want to show you a quick video that I shot the other night on how I actually measured up and cut all of these. Hey guys, so it's quite late at night, but I was working on something that I thought I should probably show you all. Um, I've pulled out all of the plywood, it's all over there, ready to get that first couple of coats of resin over it so it starts to soak in before we actually glass it into the boat. But Here's the scenario. I, as I've mentioned, I wanted to build a few little brackets that will sort of go at floor level with the stringer here, and we'll all glass in to make the, the stringer much more structurally solid. It'll just mean that at no point could it ever take um, take pressure and, and push over or, or delaminate from the hull or anything like that. So I knew I wanted to do that. So I've actually gone through and made two for down here, which is fine. You actually see two just hand-drawn lines on either side, which is sort of where it fits in, which is fine. And, um, and then I come up here. Now, interestingly, the boat is too wide for me to do it to try and do a floor with one big plywood sheet. So I know I'm gonna have to cut it, basically do two sheets and cut them the other way. So this is the, the line here that'll mark out where the two sheets will join together. Um, I'm gonna glass them together, but I thought, well, if I'm gonna do that, I may as well put a couple of, um, of bracing points at floor level down to the hull at you know on either side of the the line here so that um, the example is if you're walking around the boat and you step just on the on on just over the crack you don't want the crack to sort of fall through right now glassing it together should mitigate all of that but having some extra support on either side makes sense so i started working out well you know to build a a, a bracket basically a, a triangular piece it'll run follow the shape of the hull there and then come up and then go across to the hull that's all i really wanted to do just one piece that goes in there and i was looking at you know cardboard templates and so on and i thought well we've got the hot glue gun and that worked for the transom so what would it look like if i did that here and this is what it turned into right so all i've done is gone through with the hot glue gun and some paddle pop sticks and basically made a perfect little template that is the exact curvature of the hull of the boat so it's, just, it's literally just paddle pop sticks glued together and then and a couple of them glued together at the end to get the spacing correct and then what we do is we take that over to our plywood trace it out and you've got what should cut out as a perfect piece straight off the bat so that's what this whole process is designed to do and i think um this is a really really smart way of doing it just because it means that it's almost always perfect the first time and it's less it looks fiddly but it's way less fiddly than trying to cut out cardboard and make it work so i wanted to show you that what that translates to is if i come over here this is sort of a, a planning bit of plywood that i'm working on for tomorrow as you can see there watching some boat works today classic um so what that turns into is this is the piece of wood i'm going to work with that's the stringer line this is where the floor will go in this is the shape of the hull so i'm able to put this in here at the exact height that needs to be obviously you might remember that the puddle pop stick wasn't the full height so that's measured to the right the correct height and that goes there and then the line is traced around it which would actually be like that and um and that gives you what should be the perfect curvature now i'm gonna have to come back and sand it to get it to be exactly right but this is certainly the best way that i've seen it done and um and in trying to cut plywood in trying to cut cardboard templates this is definitely the easiest way so i just wanted to share that with you guys and, um, and yeah, onwards and upwards, let's do it. 
So as I mentioned, these have already been uh, resin coated on one side and all of the edges, and now it's just the opposite side that's just drying off at the moment. So all this is, is polyester resin, um, added the, the, um, the methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, which is the, like the hardener and um, or the catalyst. So that's just a, a pretty standard dose of that. All of it's painted on. And the idea is that as these dry, um, it's the plywood is actually soaking it in. And I want to get a coat on there first because I've seen or I've read about situations where if you don't do that, if you don't pre-coat these, when you actually go and glass these with fiberglass cloth or chop strand or whatever to the boat, the plywood will actually suck the resin out and leave the cloth quite dry. So the idea is if you pre-coat all of these in advance and it sucks it up, you're basically soaking it in advance so that it'll almost reject or it'll let the, the new glass actually sit on it as opposed to drawing it all in. So that's the goal here. I've also done, done this with the transom because obviously the transom sheets are, it's critical they get a good laminate between them. So if the plywood sucked it in, you wouldn't get a good good uh, solid contact between the two sheets and also the transom of the boat. So while they're drying off, I'm looking at a few other uh, little admin pieces of work to sort out while I, to finalize. Obviously, transom's gonna go in the hull. These are gonna get glassed, the stringer, as I mentioned, which will go into the boat. All right, so all these pieces have uh, received a couple of coats of resin. And what I've done is I've just tacked on exactly where the, the ribs here are supposed to go with the hot glue gun. Now, um, the reason why I've done that is because they actually have to sit at a very specific angle. So in that case, that one's raised slightly at the bottom. Um, these ones are as well, just slightly. Um, so they've got to sit at a slight angle because the floor is going to be flush there. So if I'd gone completely flat here, it would have meant that this would have angled out. I didn't want that. So what I'm going to do now is I use some thickened resin and actually push it underneath these edges so it gets nice and solid and get a nice curved edge as best as I can on each of these so that I can then come through and glass it later. So effectively, we're going to build the full stringer and ribs out of the boat and then drop it into the boat. At least that's the plan anyway, let's see how it goes. All right, so it's just under 300. So if I was doing that at 1.5, all right, so that's just under 300 grams there. So if I was doing that at 1.5%, that would be six milliliters of methyl ethyl ketone peroxide, which is our catalyst. Um, I've been measuring these with a little measuring cup. So that one there is a half a, a teaspoon, which is 2.5 milliliters. So that's the easiest way for me to do it. So I'll do uh, two and a bit of these and that'll get us well and truly enough in there to, to set it over mine. So at 1%, that would obviously be three milliliters, which is just one and a bit of those. So I know that um, it will actually set with the amount we've put in. Um, I actually probably have to move quite quickly because I put in a little bit more than that 1.5%. So that's gonna mean um, we've probably got 15, 20 minutes of this being very workable, but that's obviously something we've gotta keep in mind that at different temperatures, this results in different um, speeds in which it, it hardens. If you put in if it was very, very cold and um, I didn't put it enough, there's a possibility it would stay, so stay soft. Now that's obviously not the case here, but something for us to keep in mind. And at this point, I'm gonna get my mask on because I can already get a bit of those fumes. And you guys will also be pleased to know that I'm gonna wear gloves too. So we're gonna go very, very safe.
All right, well that went on surprisingly well. So basically all I've done there is gone in and cut into the edges and put a nice curved surface there because then the fiberglass cloth will go straight down and beautifully curve over it. Um, if you tried to put cloth down uh, without doing this curved edge, you're just gonna get this void in the corner where it separates. So on each one of these, you can see that drives relatively clear, but you can see a nice curved edge. Um, I ended up curving it with my fingers. Um, it's probably not the smoothest it could be. In fact, if you go really close, you can see it's got some sort of ripples in it, but I'm not worried about that. The glass will feel all of those. Um, and I was able to have more control. I might try out using a spoon for another round. It's kind of hard to see there, but that one there gives you a better indication. So if you look straight down, you can see it starts up quite high and then curves nice, nicely around. And, um, and obviously it also ins pushed a lot of it in underneath these, so they're effectively glued down now. So yeah, quick little, little hack job to get these attached and, um, and give me a nice platform to glass too. What I did with the excess uh, thickened resin that I had there was I actually came around here to the front of the boat because there's a bit of a void that I had to fill. So up, what I found was, I was trying to work out how the stringers had originally gotten rotten when the floor was all glassed in. And what I found was two interesting things. One, up inside the side of here, up under there, is actually a, um, an opening. So it actually opened up and then the water would come down, pull up here and then run out of a hole here. So I've glassed that all closed. And what I've been doing is every time I've had thickened resin ready to go, I've actually been coming up inside here and glassing the insides of these walls in that cavity to close it all off. So the idea is water that does get in there in here stays in here. If it overfills, I want it to overfill out of here onto the floor of the boat, not to slide down underneath. So basically what I'm doing ultimately is re-glassing the inside of these, but starting with the big open holes on either side. So that's what I've been doing with the thickened resin. But as I say, that hole there has been blocked up anyway. So even if water did somehow get through, it would be trapped on that side of that glass, which I would rather have than it get through to the stringers. So that's where we're at for now. Um, it's, I just figured it was good to get, start to get that fixed up anyway, just because something that I've been wanting to fix. So that's where we're at. All right, so we've now done this side. They've got a nice, quite a simple little curve on them. Um, as we walk around, you'll see, again, I just did this with a paddle pop stick, just round them off. They only really need a curve so that the glass sticks and you don't have a hard right angle. So it doesn't have to be, you know, a beautiful curve because it's all gonna be glassed over anyway, which will present a much smoother output in the end. This is effectively acting as a glue to hold them there in the meantime, and also to, um, to give us that curved edge. That gives you a pretty good indication of what it looks like. Now with the leftover resin, what I've been doing is coming up to the front of the boat here, there's a couple things I've done. One is glass in that hole, as I've already mentioned. Oh, there you go. So one is that glass in hole down the bottom that I've already mentioned, but what I've done is you might be able to see if I just put that there, oh, you can't really, that inside edge is actually a gap through to the floor. So what I've done is put some mesh in there, coated it in the thickened epoxy, in the thickened resin, and um, I'm gonna come through and glass the hole inside of it, but that's added some structure to either side, just to make life a lot easier when adding the, um, when adding the glass, I've basically given it structure to stick to. All right, it's pretty late. One thing I was gonna mention in my last video, I talked about a motor that I had organized. Unfortunately, that one fell through. The guy decided he wasn't gonna sell it, so I'm gonna search for another one. I'm thinking probably 25 to 30 horsepower outboard for this boat. It's pretty light, like I can certainly lift it on my own, so I don't wanna get anything too massive. Um, so I'm in the market for one of those, gonna keep an eye out. Uh, 
If anyone's watching this, by the way, you're probably going to see this before I bought one. I'm looking for short shaft tiller steer. Uh, something reasonably late model. Don't mind two stroke or four stroke. So if you've got one or you know someone with one or you want to do some research for me, feel free to let me know in the comments because that's something that I am doing. Um, plans in the short term. Obviously, I want to finish this string up, which means also doing the, the ribs on the other side of it. So we're going to get them tacked on and then we'll do all the glassing in one hit, which is cool. I'm also going to get the transom in the boat. So that's also another big project that I'm pretty pumped about. Hopefully you guys see that real soon. Anyway, I'm going to bed. It's late. I'll talk to you guys soon. Cheers. Alright, so I'm about to show you the transom install. Now, it's um, it was a little bit messier than I expected it would be and we had to move very, very quickly because the resin was hardening quite fast. So, as much as I wanted to take my time and talk through it to camera, we just did not have that luxury and a whole bunch of things went wrong. As you saw in the video, Dad's glasses fell into the resin straight away, so that was panic stations. Uh, we didn't have anywhere near enough thickened um, to go around the edge and then what I wanted to do was actually coat the back wall. So, anyway, a lot of lessons. Let's get into it now. So we're starting out here by literally painting on resin on both the inside wall of the first sheet of plywood and the back and the fiberglass shell of the boat and then running around the edge with thickened resin. Now I actually thought this resin would go a lot further than it did but the minute we started putting it in we ran out very very fast so I had to rush back to start making up additional batches um, and as anyone who's done this before knows it's not super fast doing this and especially with thickened where you've got to really mix it in well it takes a few minutes so I had to move fast in order to not be in a situation where we were sitting there with a half dried transom and no progress. So the first piece slides right in. That's relatively simple. Um, a lot of people now at this point would clamp it off, let it dry, let it set, and then bring the second one in later. In the interest of time, we didn't really want to do that. So we immediately set off on coating the, 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 out, <clears throat> coating the outward facing uh, now, now transom and also the, uh, the back piece of the second sheet of plywood. Obviously there's two sheets of plywood to make this roughly 24 mils thick in just plywood alone. Plus there'll be an extra probably 10 mils of glass added after we're all said and done. So this will be probably at least a third thicker than this transom would have been from factory. This is not a clean process, it's not a smooth process. The gloves I wore broke three times, you don't really see that. Um, I wanted to go full safety gear and mask and everything else, but in the chaos, that, that 20 minutes of getting this all in and making it work while you need to be moving fast is very, very difficult. So as much as I want to make some apologies for, for a few of the steps in this process, it, we did the best we could with what we got. And to be honest, I'm super happy with it. So now coming in with the transom all in and drying, got a whole bunch of clamps on the top and we've actually got three screws running all the way through. I know some of you will shudder at the idea that we're already putting screw holes in there. Obviously that's all gonna get filled with glass uh, very shortly. They're there because I didn't have a string or anything to brace in here to push the bottom in and that's very, very important. I didn't want it to be clamped up here and separated down there. But um, around the edge, it's got thickened, oh, let me just, around the edge, you've got thickened resin all the way around the edge, nice curved, uh, edge there that will be out of glass too. So really, I just need to wait for this to dry. We've also been around the transom and any of the previous holes have now been very well filled as well. So obviously when the, the wood got clamped against it, it's pushed all the resin through, which is great. And then we've come through afterwards and coated all of it with additional resin. So there's no way those holes are gonna leak again. And I'm gonna make as few holes in this transom in the future as I can. Obviously the screw holes will get filled and um, there's a whole bunch of glass that's gonna come on to wrap around this transom, but that's it. Pretty well done at this point in time anyway. And that's this video done. Obviously a lot to do, but a big, gigantic amount of progress by getting all of the wood there in that transom. I'm gonna come back to you in the next video. We're gonna be talking about glass in the transom. We're gonna be talking about glass and the stringers. Stringers get dropped in. Then we're structurally sound again. Get the floor in, get the knees into the transom. It's gonna be sick. There's a lot to come and I'm really, really pumped about it. Give us a like, leave us a comment, hit the subscribe button as always and the notification bell. And thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all of your advice and feedback along the way. So many of you guys have been in the comments telling me what to do, what not to do, what I'm already doing wrong, what I need to do better. And um, a whole bunch of those learnings have gone into every single future step. So I really, really appreciate that. Thanks guys and I'll talk to you soon. Cheers.